Staying with us long, Mr. Cartwright? Nope. Leaving soon, I take it. Mm-hmm. Tin Bucket's a nice town. Said Tin Bucket's a nice town. Yes, I heard you. How do you like Riverbend? Oh, Riverbend's a nice town. Mm, that smells good. Hey, you took some cattle up there. Hundred head, a lot of cattle. Just mm. you and the boys? Yep. A long way from the Ponderosa. What you doing in Tin Bucket? Going back to the Ponderosa. I'll raise five. Hombre, que pasa? I'm bluffing. This I do not believe. Well, I guess that just leaves it to us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Parker. Compliment. Yeah, yeah, I keep the change. Thank you. Yes, it sure is a pleasure and a privilege doing business with the Cartwrights. Uh, Heard a lot about you. Oh. Uh, Just sorry to hear about you falling on hard times. Hard times? Would you hear that? Oh, uh, here and there, just sort of running about. Well, things couldn't be better, Mr. Tingle. This horse. What's he talking about? I don't know. Hey, horse. Oh. There you are. He got here. Good. Yeah. I know, man. Well, you sure, sure do smell good. I'm sorry, I can't say the same about you. Well, all day on the trail with a wagon load of hides, what do you expect? Well, did you have any trouble getting those hides together? Listen, boy, what kind of deal did you make on them hides in a place like this, last minute like this? Oh, some of the highs were a fellow by the name of Amos Parker. He telegraphed us while we were still on River Bend, said he was willing to pay top dollar for the highs if we could deliver them here. So I telegraphed you. You know this Parker was from someplace? Yeah, I did some business with him about, oh, nine, ten years ago. Some of them, a few had a cattle, nothing important. We're just fixing to meet him now. Come along. No, I think I'll get a bath and shave. I'll That's see you later. That's a good idea. I'll <laughs> oh, we'll see you in the saloon. All right. Take your time. I'll see you. I raise you 20. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll call you. Kind of reckless, won't you, Rice? With the luck I've been having. Hold it right there. I want to make sure you got a right to that money before I give it to you. Somebody look in his pockets. What's he got in his pockets that you're so worried about? Well, why don't you look and see? Put it away. All right, son, stand up. Those are not my cards. I don't know where they came from. That is your pocket, ain't it? You're working this deck. These two here and three you got in your hand. I count five kings. They're not my cards. Mr. Carre, they say I've been cheating. I 
Have you? No. These are not my cards. the cards came from, Mr. Cartwright. I'm afraid the sheriff found them in his pocket. My name is Parker, Mr. Cartwright. Yes. Oh. oh, we have some business to discuss. Yes, we do. Just as soon as I attend to this. Mr. Cartwright, I don't know how the cards got in my pocket. Do you know this man? Yes, he works for me. A card sharp works for you? Not a card sharp. He's a cow and a very good one. <laughs> well, it's a cinch you ain't a very good card sharp. If I hadn't have been here, he'd have probably got himself shot. I'll have to give these men the money that's here on the table. No! Easy, Candy. I've got $25 in this game. Go on, divide it up, fellas. Get your money. Well, I'm the biggest loser. $59. My money is easy to find. I got it water soaked swimming my horse across the river. Hard earned, too. Hate to lose it to a card shop. I appreciate what you've done, Mr. Codred. I'd like to thank you. Thank you, too, Sheriff. I'd be more careful who I played cards with in the future. Well, I... I ought to throw you in jail. Sheriff, uh, I'll be responsible for him. Well, get him out of town. Well, we'll all be leaving just as soon as I complete my business, if that's all right. All right. Joe Ryan heard on Candy, will you? Candy, I'll be up in a Buy a drink? Oh, uh... and just sit down and get our business out of the way. Oh, how do you even treat him? <clears throat> Can't complain. No, you've been very successful. How about yourself? <laughs> well, uh, had my uh, ups and downs, I guess more downs than ups, but, you know, all in all, uh, done pretty well. Good. How's Mrs. Parker? Alice? You remember her? Well, how is she? She's, uh... Bill. Well, she's dead, Mr. Cartwright. What happened about a year ago. Fell from her horse. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Well, uh... Misfortune happens to all of us, I guess. Yes. Yes, I've had my share. Yes, so I hear. I understand that you had a lot of hard luck lately. What do you mean? Well, the business, uh, debts, um, something about your credit wasn't... Uh... Who told you that? I don't know exactly. I mean, it's just common knowledge. Right? It sure is common knowledge. Even the barber mentioned it. Well, isn't it true? Of course not. Look, my son Horse has brought in a wagon load of hides, and there'll be two more wagons on their way. Oh, fine, fine, because I want to discuss price with you. Well, you quoted the price in the wire you sent me. Yes, and I, I know I did, but some things have happened, and I, I can't uh, come up with the money that I quoted to you on the wire. I can really only pay half now. Well, maybe you'd like an hour or so to think about it. 
No, I, uh, I don't need any more time to think about it. I, I've probably taken up too much of your time as it is. I think I'll be on my way. So we can't do business? Yes, I, I am too. Good day, Mr. Parker. care about the money. What's killing me is you believe them and not me. The sheriff believed them. It's a two-bit sheriff in a two-bit town. Two-bit sheriff or not. Put us in this gunner reel and saw the bars in his jail and he was going to throw you behind them or kill you if you try to fight him. Did you believe me about the cards? Say somebody planted them in your pocket. Yeah, that's right. When? While you were playing? I'm not that stupid. Well, when? I don't know. When I went in, there were a lot of people at the bar. They were shoving a... Ooh. Did you know any of them? No, I didn't know any of them. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Well, why don't we get the money for the hides and get out of this town? You can't. Parker says he'll only pay half price for those hides. Well, you're not going to let him get away with it, huh? No, I'm not going to let him get away with it. Now, have Hoss take those hides back to the Ponderosa. And head out the two wagons at Pine Creek. I want you to go with them. Right. Got my horse over the blacksmith shop. We'll get him. Candy? Let's go see the chair. Oh. Hi, Billy. Sure is hot. We well, gonna slow down a little bit. Can't I get all this work to do? Well, a cold sarsaparilla sure would taste good right now. It would look like you buying or mine? <laughs> I'm always broke. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll buy if you go get them, huh? Oh, okay. Hey, where's your axle grease? I need to agree to wheel. Inside there on the shelf. Fine, thank you. Now, what I'm trying to say is I ain't gonna sit around and let nobody turn this town into a three-ring circus. And nobody's intending to do that. I'm trying to clear my name, Gant. Sheriff Gant. I'm gonna have to do something about that squeak one of these days. I think every man has a right to clear his name, Sheriff. That man of yours can just thank his lucky stars that all I did was take that poker money away from him. Now, he can't stay in town and he can't come back after he leaves. Why don't you just sell them hides and all of you get out of town? I'm not selling my hides. You mean you come all this way up here and you ain't gonna sell? What are you trying to do, hold Parker up on them hides? Parker, cut the price. Parker, I think, is trying to drive a hard bargain himself. Well, maybe he's offering you all them hides is worth. They're top grade hides. Now, look here, Mr. Cartwright. All of us get pressed to the wall sometime or another, but, well, why don't you just sell them hides and, and go on home? I know that, well, you've been a rich man for a long time, but you gotta face it. You're broke. He's not broke. Now, look here, young fella. I've taken all the jaw for you that I'm a going to. You can just shut your mouth and get out this door. And if either one of you or any of that crew of yours so much as looks sideways the rest of the time that you're in town, I'll throw you in jail so fast it'll make your head swim. Now get out of here. You got him ready yet? I did the one shoe. I thought I'd clean him up all around for you. Good enough. Hey, that's a right pretty horse you got there, mister. You interested in selling him? You couldn't afford what this horse is worth. Oh, I thought maybe you'd let him go cheap. Hard up the way you are. And if it says I'm hard up, well, how else are you going to figure it? Your hired hands have to cheat at poker to make a living. <laughs> Go on, get it finished.
Virginia City Bank. And you want $5,000 cleared here to our bank? That's right. It's a lot of money to try to borrow by telegraph, Mr. Cartwright. I'm not borrowing the money. The money's mine. I just want it transferred to the bank here. Would you please send that? It's gone dead. Try it again. Well, I said it ain't working. There's nothing we can do but wait. Maybe there's something wrong at the other end. You think it was cut at the other end? Why it can be cut at either end? Come on. Well, if the wire's been cut, it's one of you done it. Well, it took you long enough. A couple more minutes and I'd have been on my way. You had to go to two saloons to find coal one. Ah, that's good. Drunk in that skunk. Here, take a rest of it. Oh. Hey, what are you doing? Just helping him finish his food. He's been hit on the head, Pa. Yes, I know. He's drunk in a skunk. Looks like you went broke in more ways than one, Mr. Cartwright. He wasn't drunk. Clean this mess up. Get them hides back on that wagon and get off the street. Well, give me a hand with this wagon. I'll pay you. I don't need pay to help a man in need of help. Luck is dogging you, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm sorry. Why? Old time's sake, I guess. Look, Mr. Cartwright, I don't like to take advantage of a man, especially when he's down and out. Parker, don't concern yourself about being down and out. I'm not. Whatever you say. Anyway, I'll buy these hides from you for. Well, three quarters of the price we said. That does it, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you, Mr. Daly. What do you say? <sighs> All right. Three quarters of the price we agreed on. All right. 
I'll write you a check for the full amount on the bank here at the Tin Bucket. If you don't mind, I'll have to verify that account. Of course not. Bank? Just over here? Yes, I know. Mr. Hollis, I'd like to ask you a question. The I... Bank of Tin Bucket is always ready to answer questions, Mr. Cartwright. No, no, thank you, thank you. And your question? Well, uh, Mr. Amos T. Parker has an account in this bank, I understand. Yes, he has. Well, what I'd like to know is, is the account large enough to cover a check in excess of $1,000? Oh, you'll have to bring in the check before I can answer that question. Well, I'd like to know if the check is good before I accept it. Well, well. I suppose it is reasonable that a man in financial difficulties would doubt everyone else. Where'd you hear that? Your financial problems are common gossip. And I'll not give out privileged information concerning our more successful clients. Mr. Cartwright, do you expect me to buy those hides? Now, what's the matter with the hides? Look at the brand. What about it? Ponderosa brand? Well, turn it over. What do you call that brand? Bar E. Uh, can you prove that that steer was legally yours before the brand was doctored? Mr. Parker, I've never worked over a brand in my life. Old bail of them was found on your wagon. That's the blacksmith. That's the way of it, Mr. Cartwright. A full bail of them. You believe I'd deal in stolen hides? Well, if you're as broke as they say you are, you just mine. What about that big kid of yours? What about him? Well, what's to prevent him from going into business for himself? Oh, come on. Even if you wasn't broke, I reckon it wouldn't be the first time that some rich man's kid went and stole something just for the pleasure of stealing it. Do you believe that? Huh? Well, after what's happened today, you just tell us something we can believe. I'm going to check with the bar E, and if they've had any cattle stolen, you and that boy of yours are going to have to stand proud. If Hoss brought those hides, then he has cleared title to them. And if he ain't got clear title... Then he didn't bring them. Somebody else put him in the wagon after he got here. Oh, somebody else put him in the wagon. Who'd do something like that? Yeah, give us some answers. Who and why? I don't know who or why, but I'll find out. I left Hoss with Candy. Couldn't get a doctor. He's still unconscious. Can you explain those stolen hides, Cartwright? Now, you stay out of it. You can shut me up, Sheriff. But you can't hide the fact that Cartwright's been stealing Bar E cattle. What are you talking about? Your father's a thief. that Cartwright started the fight or you'd be paying the damages. You know how much this is going to cost you? No, I don't. But whatever it is, I'll be very happy to pay it. Here. A hundred dollars in here. That should be enough at two of those windows. Here. My money. It's gone. I had it a minute ago, just before the fight started. 
Hold on, son. Let me see it. It's mine. It's water soaked. I know it's yours. It's been a long time since we've had a pickpocket in town. Now look, I didn't take that money. Well, of course you didn't. Well, you saw me find it in his pocket, didn't you? I saw you take it out of his pocket. Well, I reckon it wouldn't be the first time when a man ever started a fight so he could pick somebody's pocket. You can't let him get away with it this time, Sheriff. You got a risk. I'm a going to. Will you swear out a warrant? You bet your life I will. All right, come on, son. Keep going. Seems like you got two boys that you don't know much about, Mr. Cartwright. One of them's a pickpocket and the other one's a cow thief. You're wrong on both counts. Oh? Well, the evidence says I'm right. How's that make you feel? Well, the evidence and you are both wrong, Sheriff. Sure do take a lot of convincing, don't you? Oh, do you want to bail him out? It'll cost you $500. Well, I haven't got $500. I didn't think so. With me. Oh, now don't you try leaving town. You do, and I'll come after you with a posse. And that uh, wagon load of hides is impounded. Leave it alone. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen a man out like this before. You think he's all right? Yeah, he's all right. His pulse is regular. Breathing is, is normal. I don't know what they doped him with. Whatever it is, it's doing a good job. There's no doctor in this town. Can I ask you something? Sure. Do you believe those cards were planted on me in the saloon? I'm sure they were. What makes you so sure? You said they were. That's good enough for me. Thanks. What I keep asking myself is why? Yeah. Why? with the cards planted on you. There was the money planted on little Joe. Why did this happen? All part of some kind of plan, isn't it? What are we gonna do? I'm gonna wait until I can talk to Horse. I gotta find out whether those hides, those blotched hides, they came with the Ponderosa. You think there's some chance they did? Well, Horse filled the wagon with some of his own hides, he may have a better sale for them. But more than likely, the hides came from stolen cars and they were switched here in town. But I can't go looking for hours until I talk to Horse. One thing I can do, though. You start proving I'm not broke. Look, I gotta give you this site draft for $5,000. I want you to take this to the Bank of Virginia City. And also this note asking for a letter of credit. But you get back with the cash and that letter just as soon as you possibly can. I feel a little funny about leaving you here alone with Hoss like this. I'll manage. Yeah. You take these and get back as soon as you can. All right, I'll be back before you know. Might be getting hungry. Uh, thanks. Any more than food is somebody to listen to sense. Uh, I'm always happy to listen to somebody. Uh, hey, you're gonna like that stew. That's a muskrat stew. I caught him myself. Hmm. 
Look, Sheriff, I, I am not a pickpocket. There's a man swore out a warrant says you are. Yeah, well, the only way that money could have gotten in my pocket was if he put it there, that fellow Rice. Now, what did a feller want to do a thing like that for? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Your stew's gonna get cold. Yeah, not, uh, not that hungry, thanks. Well, sure ain't no reason letting it go to waste. You know, an old mountain man taught me how to make this stew. He learned how to fix it from a ute one. I reckon I'm the only man in the world knows how to cook this stuff now. Look, Sheriff, I don't have to pick pockets. My brother Hoss doesn't have to steal cattle, and our ranch hands don't have to cheat at cards. Is that a fact? Yeah, that's a fact. We happen to be a very prosperous family. You're going to find that out tomorrow. Then how come your old man couldn't raise a measly $500 to bail you out? Well, he'll raise it tomorrow. Don't you worry about that. How do you think you're going to look to the rest of this town when they find out that whole story was just made up about us? Kind of stupid, don't you think? It don't make no difference how much money you got. It's like I said, I reckon you wouldn't be the only rich kid that ever liked to steal. I don't like to steal, and I don't steal. I remember this kid uh, over here by Three Forks. Old man run, uh, running W. Nicest little spread you ever saw. Sheriff, if you... Yeah, now, this kid, uh, I think his name was Dobie or Dobbs or... I can't remember just exactly what it was. Michael, he liked to steal. Steal anything and just loose at both ends. Just pack it off of Five cent piece of candy, $50 horse, he had to steal it. I reckon I had him in jail, oh, I don't know how many times. Couldn't cure him. Finally, his old man made him join the cavalry. They sure cured him there. Hey, did you ever think of joining up? Hmm? The cavalry. Did you ever think of joining the cavalry? Pay ain't too good, but it sure beats the heck out of being in jail. Yeah, I'll give it some thought. Why don't you think about this? Just think about all the things that have happened since we've been in this town. Well, that's an awful lot of trouble for one family. Don't you think there's something wrong with that? How's that? I said, don't you think there's something wrong with that? Yeah, I reckon. Uh, maybe it got a little too much salt in it. Took you so long getting here. Did Billy get out of town? You didn't think he was going to stick around. Horse Cartwright will wake up any time now. When he does, he'll tell his father it was Billy who switched the hides. I'm pulling out. Not now you're not. Not this close to the end. Whose? Cartwright's or mine? 
The more I see of him, the less I like the whole business. He's not dumb, he doesn't quit, and he just doesn't scare. Sounds to me like you're the one running scared. I don't care what it sounds like to you. I didn't pay you the kind of money I did just to see you walk away. You know how much this means to me, how I've planned it, how hard I've worked. It means nothing to me. Does this mean anything to you? Depends. How much? Well, just above to it. Only if it means the end of Cartwright. You got yourself a deal. Let's go. Where to? Stable. That's the first place Ben Cartwright will go, looking for those hides. You sure? I'm sure. found him. Get up. I said get up. I'll throw your gun over here. Very easy. Oh, I'm glad you found your hides. I figured you would. Why did you switch them? For the same reason I had Rice plant those cards on your ranch hand. For the same reason I made your son look like a thief. My other boy like a drunk. That's right. Now I got the whole town thinking you're broke. This is a balancing of the books, Mr. Cartwright. A final accounting. Well, you destroyed my life. Now I'm going to destroy yours. I sold you... Sold you a few head of cattle years back. How could that destroy your life? You're forgetting one thing, my wife. All the times you met with my wife. My what? That's right. I met your wife once in my life. You invited me to dinner to your place, you invited me yourself. You don't have to lie, I'm not stupid, you know. I'm not lying. It's the truth. I, I never saw... What made you, What gave you the idea I ever saw your wife again? It was obvious. Well, how could anything be obvious if it never happened? And how can you believe such a thing? Well, I believed it. I knew. Well, she was clever, though. She had excuses for everything. All her little trips and all the things she'd bring back. For 
presents from you. Well, I knew, I knew she was meeting with you. She loved you, Mr. Cartwright. Rich Ben Cartwright, big and successful Ben Cartwright. My wife is in love with you. Now, I never saw your wife after that first time. Now, that's the truth. Oh, she used to deny it, too, for a long time. She said she didn't want things like money and fine clothes, big house and position. Said she wasn't interested in them. That's not quite the way it was. In fact, it wasn't like that at all. I know because I forced the truth out of her. You know what she said? She said, yes. Yes, I love Ben Cartwright. Is that what you want to hear? I love him, I love him, I love him. Are you satisfied now? Well, those were her very words. Now, Parker, I don't know where you got any of these ideas, but there was never anything between your wife and me. I never saw her after that first time. You forced her into admitting to something that wasn't so. Mm-mm. Now she's dead. Now she's dead. Had an accident. That's right. Fell off a horse. Yeah, hit her head on a rock. Did she? She hit her head on a rock? Mm-hmm. Well, could it be that when she finally said all those things that you wanted her to say, that you forced her to say, did you pick up a rock and bash her head in, kill her? Kill her for no good reason at all, did you? I had a reason, a good reason. And she couldn't lie out of it, and neither will you. I'm going to hang you, Mr. Cartwright. Now, a rock was good enough for her. For you. A rope. For this, Mr. Cartwright. Don't shoot him! We have to hang him! I don't want him tied. I'll cut him loose once he's swing. You should have had me in here instead of waiting outside. That's all right, Pete. Cartwright, you're gonna hang yourself. Because you're a failure, remember? And what's worse, you've discovered that your sons are rotten. Well, one's a pickpocket, other a cattle thief. The good people at Tin Bucket already believe that you're broke and in debt, got no credit. They believe your sons are rotten. And you couldn't stand the disgrace, and so you hanged yourself. And the word will travel, and for years to come, you're going to be known as a broken and a disgraced man of suicide.
Okay. That's. You can thank that littlest kid of yours. I was helping him eat his supper a little bit ago, and he kept a jawing at me. And, and later on, I got to thinking, well, maybe he is right. It didn't seem like an awful lot to have happen to a family unless somebody was helping it along. So I just got to nosing around and... Uh... with Parker. He ain't got no fight left in him. It's everything, even the killing his wife. Well, best that way. What about Rice? He ain't gonna be walking around for a while. Maybe a year or more. Can't say I'm sorry. Well, I can't say as I blame you. You come on back anytime. You're always welcome. Yeah.